Welcome back to Arise 360. Now, the Los Angeles Times calls our first guest a prominent energy-based healer. And now, she's bringing her healing to the world in her new book, The Empath Survival Guide, Life Strategies for Sensitive People. Mm -hmm. Psychiatrist and New York Times best-selling author, Dr. Julius Orloff, welcome to the show. Thank you. How yes. are you? I'm fantastic. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> she's this is very excited. amazing. Because she's all into this stuff. But yes. We have to break it down for some of the viewers who may not know. <laughs> First, let's start with what exactly is an energy-based healer? Uh, well, I'm a psychiatrist mm -hmm. and I'm an empath. And as part of working with patients, I use my hands to transmit healing energy. And that's part of being an empath, uh, mm -hmm. where you're open and you're sensitive and you're able to transmit the heart energy that comes through you to help others. Wow. Absolutely. Now, tell us briefly about your book and what prompted you to write it. Well, I'm so passionate about writing it because so many empaths are burnout, exhausted, and they're such good, intuitive, open, deep, loving people, and they give so much that they just get so exhausted or with some ache or pain or some illness. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give strategies on how not to become exhausted and yet be in your power as a sensitive person. Right. Mm. So if you were to, sorry to just hijack this, but I'm probably going to do most of the Go speaking here. No. <laughs> if you were to sort of give advice or strategies without giving too much away that's already contained in the book on how to protect one's own personal energy, particularly in crowded environments or situations or stressful situations, what would you suggest? Yeah, uh, well, a shielding technique is wonderful where you just envision a shield of white light all around your body, mm. a protective shield. So if you're around energy vampires, people who suck you dry, mm -hmm. you have this very strong energetic barrier yes. around you, and that's very helpful. And also setting clear boundaries with people. Mm. Um, empaths often can't stick up for themselves and they're people pleasers so they mm -hmm. just want to give, give, give. Mm -hmm. But no is a complete sentence. Yeah. When you say no, you don't have to make an explanation because mm. no is complete and that's a boundary because mm -hmm. people get drained when they over explain yep. or over give. Mm -hmm. And so for an empath or empathic people to be in their power, they have to be very clear about their boundaries. They have to feel the power of their heart mm. also and be very sure about about that and that will give them confidence. Yeah, Can you break that. down what is the empath and why empathy is so important in this day and age? Right, well, there's a spectrum of empathy. There's mm -hmm. ordinary beautiful empathy, which is your heart goes out to another person where you feel mm -hmm. what's going on. But empath is higher up in the spectrum where oh. you actually feel it, but you take it on into mm -hmm. your own body, which can be a positive and a negative. Mm -hmm. And there's so much suffering and negative energy around. Yeah. You don't want to be taking all this energy into mm -hmm. your own body. So it's sort of like those people where a lot of stressful things are going on and there's a lot of chaos and commotion going on and someone's like, I'm so exhausted. Exactly. It's like because they're taking all If you're all exhausted, all that. then I mm -hmm. feel it as you the empire. Yeah. I feel what you're feeling. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And your energy goes down. Mm -hmm. And that's why empaths need strategies so that mm -hmm. they can really be out there, the path forgers now, because we need empathy more than ever. We need to understand another person's point of view. And empaths can do that. We can feel into other people mm -hmm. to see where they're coming from yeah. and that's so important to making changes in the world and so empaths have to be in really good shape and feel really good about yeah. themselves to be able to make changes in their environment and mm. not just be burnt out and exhausted mm. as a psychiatrist and an empath how do you not get bogged down with all your clients emotions mm -hmm. the weight of that must be it must be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, potentially, but it isn't. Um, because I practice all the techniques in the empath survival guide. I need to for my own survival. I can't see too many patients in one day. Yeah. I don't schedule them back to back. I'm really careful with who I work with. Um, and so, you know, I really take good care of myself. Mm -hmm. Self-care is part of being an empath. Mm -hmm. You have to. You have to listen to your body. Yeah. If you just push and push and push, and you don't listen to those signs in your body that say, hey, Hey, you know, it's okay not to go out tonight. It's mm -hmm. okay to be in your bathtub filled with candles mm -hmm. all around and you. Rose petals. And rose petals. With a glass yeah. of wine. <laughs> Sorry, we're not going to be Exactly. But that's how you can replenish mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And it's okay to say no. You don't have to go out if you're exhausted. Mm -hmm. So this book is about how empaths and all sensitive people can take care of themselves. You know, it seems like, for me, a lot of the women in my family are empaths. Like yeah. They just take on so yeah. many responsibilities abilities and pain and yeah. energy of other people. How does right. one identify if they are in fact a real empath Great or not? Question. Right, good question. There's a quiz in the front of the book. And oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyone who thinks they're an empath can take this quiz, mm -hmm. but usually they've been called overly sensitive mm -hmm. or hypersensitive all their lives. Uh, a put As though it's a bad way. Oh. A yes. bad, a bad way. I, my mother, who was a physician, said to me, oh dear, you just need to get a thicker skin. Yeah. which felt so awful as of a child. Mm -hmm. You know, I felt like there was something wrong with me, yeah. and there isn't for everyone yeah. listening. Um, empaths also need a lot of alone time, and they like, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like to replenish themselves alone, and they don't replenish themselves with lots and lots of people, and so when they give themselves that time, that's wonderful. Yeah. And empaths often love nature. They mm. love to go out. You're nodding yes yeah, to everything. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes by the water always. You know, to be by water yes. you know, uh -huh. or to be in bathtubs. Um, and empaths also absorb the energy and emotions of other people into their own bodies. Huh? And you can feel that. For instance, if you're around an energy vampire, you can feel mm. your energy going down right away. Yeah, yeah. it seems and so you, toxic. Absolutely. Yeah. They're so toxic, but you need mm. to intuitively identify these people. It's just self-care and survival. Mm. So we've spoken about how to protect oneself prior to coming to contact with mm -hmm. people right. that are energy vampires and, and the like but assuming you do then come into contact with these people what can you do to counteract the effects that you might be feeling uh, well afterwards I would go home and do a lot of deep breathing because when mm -hmm. you breathe that brings the energy out of your body and it puts it back out and oh, to wow. meditate there's a three-minute heart meditation that I use all the time where if I feel like I absorb the energy of toxic people I go home I sit I get very quiet I put my hands together close my eyes mm -hmm. tune into my heart and I begin to replenish my subtle energy flow like a meditation Shakti. yes oh, okay. in meditation but you have to calm down down and go inward to yeah. feel your own spirit mm. and then when you feel your own spirit it begins to replenish but you have to get quiet and mm -hmm. usually I just close the door I have a sign on my bedroom do not disturb <laughs> <laughs> right, and a lot to go with that. <laughs> well, you know what? When I think of a psychiatrist, I think of you know, lie on the couch. Uh, how does that make you feel? You know, you know them saying things Why do like you think that. You did that. Yes, exactly. Those type of questions. So, how is your approach different with your clients? Well, I use all my scientific training, and I also tune in intuitively and empathically. So I get information about my clients that's nonverbal. Mm -hmm. And also, I might work with them on the couch, but in a different way, where I'll have, uh, them, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> no. I have them lie down and do energy work on them, where I activate the energy in their own body, for instance, if they have panic attacks, to learn how to activate their own heart energy to bring oh, the anxiety wow. down before it snowballs. Well, you know, a lot of people will say that's just a little hoodoo voodoo, <laughs> and they don't believe that it actually works. So what do you say to those cynics to the that say, Yes, that well, that's okay. You know, people have to do what they believe in. Mm -hmm. But if you're drawn to this, you know, as, as you are, definitely, and I think you are, it will work. This Absolutely. works. This is how I lead my life. This is how I've been in my practice for 25 years. Absolutely. So I, I know it works. It's, <clears throat> it's not something new. Absolutely. And I mean, there are lots of people that agree with you because yeah. psychiatry, psychology, these are exact sciences. Mm -hmm. Energy healing, Maybe not so exact, right, quote unquote. Right. But if you look at people like, rest in peace, Stephen Hawking, the greatest mind of our time, even he mm -hmm. says everything is energy. So everything is energy. Yeah. Everything is energy. And when you could begin to interact empathically yeah. and sense the energy around others, that we're these flesh and blood bodies, but we're also these energy fields, mm -hmm. that we can sense things. And as a physician, that really helps me Absolutely. to sense my patient's energy mm -hmm. and really get a sense of what's going on to help them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do any of your, I won't say powers, but do any of your <laughs> abilities go no, deeper than that? She's a superhero. But, but what I think, powers. No, I think when <laughs> people are mean? that in touch with their self and their centeredness and the flow of energy in their body, that they do take on certain types of, you know, feelings, emotions, or psyche, you know. What is it you're trying to say? <laughs> Can, can you, you can say read what other people is like? Can uh, you read people's not, minds? Not, like, like he's trying read to their ask. minds. Like, it's like reading energy, but it's almost like reading their essence of who they are. Can, mm. What else can you do? Do you have any capabilities that others would see as powers? Well, or Well, that's part of empathy. I don't mm. like to call any of it superpowers because mm. I look at it as very natural. Mm. We all have it. You have it. You have it. And when you can be empathic and really listen to somebody and tune in with that empathy, you can know things about them. Yeah, see, that's, I was not trying to be offensive. Oh. I was trying to Ask in a sensitive way. Like, I know. Okay. I know. No, so, what great. type of things could you know, or do you have you? Uh, well, I could tell, you know. You can tell us a secret about Shannon. What you yes, pick up from him? <laughs> um, he. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he, I just tried to cheat. He, he, he has an amazingly big heart and he is does. very balanced and is Aww. such a good person. Aww. And I felt that. You about are the truth. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> I, no, I felt that immediately Thank when you. I when I met you. Oh. No, and, and don't and, tell me what you felt oh, good about do me. Her, do fun. her. Do her. Do her. Well, you're you're a little different. You have. I mean, you have a tremendous, a tremendous power. Ooh. You know, to manifest. Tell me more. Mm, sure. <laughs> you do. You have a tremendous positive power to manifest, but you have to be sure of yourself. Mm. Thank you. Hey, You're well, welcome. Dr. Judith, where can we Love pick it. up this yes. fascinating copy of this marvelous book? Thank you. Where can we get it? Um, any bookstore, Amazon, my website, drjudithorloff.com. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. I can't wait to get stuck in. I know, right? And you guys better go out and purchase it. Thank you. Step into your power. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> that was great. Thank you, Thank Dr. You. Judith. Thank you.